Listen, it's unfortunate, but before the current panty we in right now, there was another sickness going around. People are obsessed and are still obsessed with their phones and scrolling. And they're addicted like crackheads. And this is a source of their neck pain. Oh my god, they, they can't control themselves. Anywhere, anytime, any place, even cooking. Look at it, you see my guy flipping doing his thing, but then he's gonna drop everything, start laughing, like some stupid post, and walk off. You know, the whole house could burst into flames and he don't even care. And you know what? I'm appalled by the poop to scroll ratio. It's five minutes of pooping and 15 minutes of scrolling. We gotta fix that. Bathroom time is supposed to be sacred time, and it's no longer that. That's right. You spray that for breeze, boy. Or you blame it on Kitty. One of those two. But stop texting. You know, it's funny because you would think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. People just, it's like someone gorilla glued their phone to their hand and they have no choice but to live their life like that. These are also the type of people that can't even text you back when they have their phone in their hand the entire day. People, I can't make this up. This is why they in pain. Even when they're supposed to be doing the damn job. Look at this guy. He don't even care. He's gonna take his break, do what he wants, cause he's daddy and he's grown. And he wonders why this exacerbates his problems. Alright you guys, we are on phase number two of the posture series. This one is going to be strictly on the neck. And you saw how people use their phones. People actually use their phones like that. That's the crazy thing. It blows my mind. In the previous video, we were talking about your occupation, how that affects your neck. Phones are another component. There's many other things that we're going to talk about. But I want to talk about the muscles that are involved, how to stretch them, and a few things just to be considerate of and mindful of. All right, my lovely people, we're gonna talk about considerations for your neck in regards to your posture. And before we continue any further, I want you to screenshot this, take a picture, write it down, whatever you wanna do. Get this information, please. Right, so where do you spend your time? As you saw in the video with the phone, in the previous video I put out about the posture, sitting at a desk, what position is your neck in when you're doing these things and when you're experiencing pain? Are you rotated a lot? Are you looking up? Is it forward? Is it down? Where is your neck at, right? And the second one is kind of similar, the height of your desk, chair, and your monitor. Those are all gonna dictate and affect the position of your neck. If your monitor is too high, boom. Your desk is too high, your shoulders are up, you're uncomfortable. That should try to be close to your natural elbow position as possible. I don't know if you saw that, if I'm getting cut off. And how often do you take breaks? Breaks are extremely necessary. That doesn't mean you get up, walk around, even though that would be nice if they let you, but you look, little stretch breaks, little movement breaks you can do at your desk. I'll put a video of that soon too. I got you, I got you. And then are you leaning on things? Very self-explanatory, like, similar to the other ones. Keeping your spine in a natural position. Notice I said natural, not neutral. So we want the neck a little curved, thoracic spine a little curved this way, lower back a little curved that way. We don't want everything straight. We need those natural curves, right? And the ears are gonna be in line with your shoulders. That's a good cue, a good thing to have, right? Which is kind of similar to a chin tuck. Arch nemesis to you ladies out there. Yeah, I hate this exercise, Jack. Yeah, not wanna do it. I know why, I get it, it's okay. They don't have a beard to cover the double chin. I mean, some of y'all do, but we won't talk about that, right? And now let's move on to the muscles that are gonna be tight. So you're gonna have your SCM, which is your sternocleidomastoid. Put a picture somewhere over here. Scalenes, bang, put a picture there your upper trap, levator scap, bang, bang, and then your upper cervical extensors and your lower cervical flexors. What do I mean by all of that? Upper cervical extensors, general term for anything along here, along the, the neck, close to the spine, all the way up into the base of the skull. It's gonna bring the neck like that, right? The upper part. Lower cervical flexors, anything on this lower end that's gonna bring that head forward and give you that upper cross. You know what? I'm gonna show you a picture of what upper cross is. That's pretty much what a lot of you guys with neck pain, shoulder pain, when you're sitting are dealing with or might have, right? I ain't no doctor. Again, this ain't no diagnosis or medical advice, but I'm just letting you guys know and informing you. All right, upper cross. Let's talk about it. You're gonna hear it in this video and the next one. So upper cross, right? Remember that. I do posture, I'm doing my thing, I'm killing it. I'm having a very productive day at work. But now all of a sudden I get tired or fatigued. My head kind of comes forward. Start getting tight here, right? And the upper part of the neck, because you can't look at the keyboard, has to move up, right? Boom. Our pecs are like this. Our shoulders are forward and internally rotated. All of this is getting tight. So let's recap, right? Boom, the lower half of the neck in the front, tight. The upper half here, tight. 
tight, tight, internal rotators, everything, all of that gets tight. What gets inhibited, weakened, is gonna be the opposites, right? So anything that will extend this way, very weak, right? Anything that pulls this way, the serratus anterior, which is your ribcage muscle, it gets inhibited, right? The upper part right here, your upper cervical, very, very weak. The lower half here, very, very weak. That's pretty much just how upper cross will apply to the neck and the shoulder, right? Again, next video, we're gonna explore more. All right, so we got a tranquil setup. I got some candles lit. I'm finna stretch and show you how it's done. We're gonna stretch everything on the right side. We'll start with the SCM, the muscle right in the front of the neck. You can get it like this, like a trap stretch, but here's a way you can really put more attention and focus on it. You rotate to one side, tuck the chin in a little bit, and then pull the left ear to the left shoulder. You feel a good pull on the right. You can feel it slightly different. If this irritates your neck, don't do it. Chill out. Do a different stretch. But this is just a way to focus on the SEM and put a great emphasis on it. I love it. It's dope. Up next, we're going to stretch your scaling muscles, the neighbor to your SEM in the front of your neck. You're going to anchor that shoulder and use the chin as a guide and kind of go diagonally. You're going to have to play with the position of feel like you got a real good pull. But when you, when you got it, you're going to feel it. And I want you to also breathe in deep and breathe out because this muscle helps with inspiration. So when you breathe out, it stretches a little more. Now we're going to stretch the trap. Tried and true, straightforward. Tuck that chin, bend the top of the neck a little bit. Then you're going to pull that left ear to your left shoulder. Ah, relaxing. You're going to hold all these stretches for about 30 seconds and repeat them three times. That's a kind of golden standard. Now we're going to do the levator, my favorite. I think everyone can benefit from this one. It, this one, this one's great. So you can look to the left, rotate, look down towards the ground or in the armpit. Give it a good little pull, not too much. And waft the beautiful fragrance into your nose. Wake yourself up a little bit if you're a little spicy, you know. You can put no deodorant that morning. Now let's stretch the neck flexors in the front, the lower ones. Anchor there, chin goes up and out a little bit and you'll feel a little bit of a pull when you do that. Again, if this is irritating to your neck, don't do it. Everyone has different complications and can't quite do everything. So take everything slow and do the exercises that feel good for you. Keep that chin tucked. Now we're gonna bend the top of the neck. It's gonna get the neck extensors at the top. If you can hold it without the hand assisting, go for it and you can give it a good pull. Just don't pull too much. Don't hurt yourself now. Trying to be therapeutic and relax. Now we're gonna do some range of motion stuff. This is straightforward. You can do all this at your desk, man. Your little stretch breaks, knock these out. Motion to lotion, baby. Remember that. So after going up and down, you're gonna look left and you're gonna look right just as much as you really can, right? And if you're limited just a little bit, you don't have to go crazy. Little motion is better than none, right? So just, just watch yourself and pace yourself. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Now we're gonna do some isometrics. So I'm gonna apply resistance to my head, but I'm gonna use my head to resist it and keep a neutral neck position. So look, I push, resist on my head. Ooh, neck gains for days. Let's go, baby. And this one's rotation, resist the rotation. You could also use your fingers. I call that the Professor X, but I don't like that one. Not fun. And then the one going straight forward, bending forward. Apply that resistance. But remember, keep good neck posture. Now I wanna see that head come forward looking like you about to far and let one rip. Nice neutral neck posture, please. And this next one is gonna be a chin tuck, which is a nice metric, that's what it is. But if you wanna take it a step further, you can hold that position and just start extending backwards a little bit. Keep doing that or repeat the entire thing by letting the head come all the way forward, all the way back and extend back. Survival guide is to help all of you with your awful posture in the day. One more thing, one more thing that I include in that little video. Upper trap stretch. I'll show you what people love to do, right? I showed you perfect calculated poise technique. What you're gonna see, maybe even yourself in the mirror, is this, right? You start pulling, head goes forward. You know why? Because they're trying to pull too hard and they're not that flexible. And by doing that, they have a false sense of, oh, look, I'm getting more flexible. Oh, I can go further. Nah, 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 just do it the right way. Do it the right way. All right, all right. So before you lovely people leave me, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking me out. I got some golden rules for you guys. This is strictly for the neck. Let's bust them out real quick. All righty, so we got a jump. Wait, wait, even before that, give you an opportunity. Screenshot that. Remember it, recite it like it's 10 commandments, all right? Now let's get back to it. 
adjust your posture throughout the day. I always want you guys to try to seek to, oh, I'm slipping, look in the mirror, ask someone to pay attention to you, to hit you or something when you're not behaving, you're not doing the right thing. Hey, that works for some people, right? But no, but seriously, try to adjust it throughout the day and catch yourself slipping. Stretch throughout the entire day, very important. Let's reverse all the sitting we're doing and knock out those chin tucks. Next one is always adjust your desk, chair, and your station or monitor. People sit in your stuff, change the levels of everything and throw you off balance. Find a position that works, reproduce it every time and make sure it's good for your body type. Straightforward. Ears over the shoulders, as close to the shoulders as possible, right? Boom, this is like collarbone, right? You don't want your ears all the way over your nipples. That's not good, that's no bueno. And that's not the point. The next one is juicy. I'm proud of this one. Face whatever it is you're looking at. Stop doing this for long periods of time, all interpretive stuff, right? Stop that. Face what you're looking at. If your chest is facing it, your neck will be happy, right? And the last one is the most important one. Well, I forgot one. Make sure you got a little curve in that neck. I'll never hurt nobody. But on to the last one. Be forgiving and be patient with yourself. I think that's very important. A lot of us are very hard on ourselves. Give yourself a little credit. If you normally have eight hours of awful posture, but you only got seven and a half, dude, that's progress. That's 30 minutes of good posture. We all gotta start somewhere, right? We're not gonna go from eight hours of bad posture to an hour, right? It's just not gonna happen. So be realistic and be patient with yourself. But until next time, guys, keep up with your stretching, watch your posture, and mind your business. Peace.